But let's begin uh, this morning's conversation talking about the setup for markets here. Let's bring in Jordan Jackson, global market strategist over at JP Morgan Asset Management. So Jordan, let's talk about how you guys are, are thinking um, about the setup here with a lot of anxiety in the market for a market that's trading basically at record highs. I mean, we saw this a couple weeks back when you know what, the Dow fell 1% or something like that. We saw it yesterday. It seems that the, the energy is a little bit fraught. How are you guys thinking about um, just the overall tenor of the proceedings here as we get through August? Sure, it does feel like uh, markets are sort of in a in a bit of a holding pattern here. Um, I, I still think that the, the, the path of least resistance for markets is higher. I, I'm still penciling in roughly another 5 to 10% of price appreciation in the market uh, to the end of the year. And I think that's primarily be due to the support of low interest rates and, and a very, very strong earnings backdrop. You know, I also think you have a very constructive economic backdrop as well. Uh, growth is still expected to run above trend. Uh, we're starting to see signs that inflation may have already peaked and, and prices begin to, to, to decelerate. And so I think all of these sort of continue to provide support for the markets. Now, this doesn't mean that, you know, this next sort of leg higher won't be met with uh, a certain degree of volatility. Uh, you obviously still have uh, concerns over the debt ceiling. Uh, where monetary policy is headed, um, as well as the Delta variant, uh, of course. And so, you know, I, I think, again, uh, the, the path of these resistance may be higher, but it will be met with uh, so elevated degrees of volatility. And I'm curious, um, Jordan, on that inflation question, sort of what the conversations are like today that you're having uh, with clients on that, because certainly back in the spring, um, it, it was it wasn't a lot of fun to try to tell someone who was convinced inflation was headed higher that it would be transitory. But now some of that data is is coming in and, and sort of, you know, how are you working through um, maybe those concerns or or saying, hey, you know, give it a few more months and it, it looks like some of this is going to work itself off. Sure. So I think the real key point when I think about sort of inflation really is, is how is inflation going to dictate monetary policy if it's going to change the calculus there at all? And then also how inflation might dictate um, sort of the margin story for, for corporates. You know, I think the inflation story uh, from, from a monetary policy perspective, I think the Fed has done a pretty good job in convincing the markets that inflation will be transitory. Um, again, as mentioned, you're already starting to see signs of that, that deceleration particularly in areas of, of used cars and auto sales, which have been rising substantially over the past couple of months, have started to decelerate. Um, and so I think that that is a sort of an encouraging sign. However, when we look at sort of this cost push inflation, right, inflation kind of being driven by uh, a, a rise in commodity prices, a rise in raw materials, I think that could start to eat its way at, at corporate profits. I talked about how earnings really being a support for the markets more broadly. Um, but if you get sort of, of, of margins, a worry, worrisome margin picture where, where uh, uh, rising material and input costs start to eat away at margins, as well as rising wages continue to eat at margins, uh, that could spell a little bit of concern for some of the, the 2022 uh, uh, earnings numbers for the S&P 500. So I think the calculus is, you know, monetary policy continues to stay from an interest rate perspective, continues to stay very accommodative. You know, I do think that the Fed continues, starts to, you know, really uh, talk about balance sheet reduction uh, or, or tapering of the asset purchases. I don't think we'll get a lot from the minutes, uh, from the July minutes this afternoon. Uh, but I do think it is going to solidify some of the, the speech that we've heard or the rhetoric that we've heard from Fed officials over the past couple of weeks here that the committee is certainly in, in talks of, of, of tapering. So, you know, I think that's generally sort of how we think about sort of the inflationary dynamics and, and what are the, 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 the effects that it might have. Um, hey, it's Julie here. I, I want to ask about one of the other potential risk factors, and that's China. Um, in recent days, today it's a little bit more mixed, but certainly in recent days we've seen a sell-off in Chinese stocks listed here in the U.S. We keep hearing about various regulatory crackdowns on different sectors of the Chinese economy. Add to that the fact that you've got some ports shut down there. We had recent economic data that was worse than estimated. Um, how much of a risk is that, um, not just for China itself, but for the global economy and stocks? Well, I do think it is a risk. I think it may be a source of volatility, uh, but I don't think it's sort of a, a, you know, a harbinger of things to come. We should recognize that a lot of the decisions that are coming out or, or a lot of what we're seeing happening in China is by, by choice, not by chance. Um, and so it's a lot of, of, of what the, the PBOC and the government is trying to do in terms of slowing down 
total social financing um, because of the, the debt burdens that we're seeing. Um, you're seeing a lot of regulatory actions being taken place, really try to alleviate some of the financial burdens on the middle class parts of, of their economy. Um, and so you know, you're also seeing a rise in COVID cases, which are causing shutdowns, as well as some more natural disasters flooding. Uh, in, in certain parts of, of, the, of the country, uh, which are impacting economic activity uh, more broadly. And so, you know, I think, you know, so long as this continues to be sort of a, a choice by, by, by the government in terms of how they're going to orchestrate this slowing down uh, of the economy, um, I, I, I think it's going to be uh, a sort of a bit of a volatility-inducing uh, event, but I don't think it is a, a larger sort of, of, of worry that that market should be concerned about. Jordan, one story that has a, a lot of folks talking about this morning is Palantir. Uh, they're going out there and they just bought $50 million of, of gold bars to diversify their assets. Given the uncertainties you are seeing in, in the stock market, is now a good time for investors to, to reallocate uh, any winnings they have had in stocks to alternative assets like gold? Well, I, I can't speak specifically to, uh, to Palantir, but I do think there is always, there should be uh, a certain uh, diversifying asset within the portfolio. I mean, you, when we look at sort of um, the demand for duration, even as we start have, have already seen uh, stock and bond correlations finally dip back into negative territory, uh, you're still considering that demand for duration given the Delta variant and other concerns uh, about the market. And so while I don't think that gold might be, would be the best place to park your capital, you know, recognizing that, you know, inflation is starting to, to dissipate somewhat or decelerate um, that should push real yields higher here in the U.S., and that could cause, um, you, know, I, you, know, I, you know, again, gold being a zero-yielding asset, um, you know, you may start to see a bit of a wobble in gold. But I do think other alternative assets, uh, things like private real estate, um, hedge products to sort of uh, hedge against some of the downside risk in, in equity markets are certainly um, places that you, you, you want to sort of hedge against some of the, the volatility that we are expecting in markets. All right, we'll leave it there. Jordan Jackson, Global Market Strategist at JP Morgan Asset Management. Jordan, really appreciate the time this morning. I know we'll talk soon.